Hi, it's Dwyer. It's April the 14th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk MMAs. Francis Ngamu and how he would do against Tyson Fury. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as longtime subscribers here know, I didn't think the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather fight was going to be competitive. Right now, understand, Mayweather at that point is retired from boxing. He's not prime Floyd Mayweather anymore. McGregor was known for great punching power. But understand, Floyd Mayweather plays a different sport than Conor McGregor. Mayweather is also a defensive genius who, even today, has a hand speed advantage on Conor McGregor. Right? McGregor also fought standing up. Stands upright. That doesn't cut it in boxing circles against a guy like Floyd who's hard to hit even when you're crouched over. And of course Mayweather has a hair trigger left hook. He'll have that left hook until he dies. Right? I thought that if things got a little bit hairy Mayweather could throw that stunning left hook while keeping his defensive construct, right? He wouldn't have to overextend himself, leave himself open for a big counter by throwing a straight right hand. So, as I said at the time, in multiple videos here online, I thought the Mayweather-Conor McGregor fight was a complete mismatch. It turned out to be. I thought Mayweather wasn't even trying to fight at his best. I thought Mayweather tried to give the fans some entertainment, allowed himself to get hit, right? Is there not trying to assert himself offensively early in that fight? Well, now we have another spectacle that's being talked about, and I think this one is huge. Maybe it doesn't get quite the box office that McGregor Mayweather got. Right? Because that was new. It was interesting. Maybe this one is going to be viewed as more of an amusement park exhibit. But understand, you have current UFC champion Francis Ngamu, who's a puncher with hand speed, who can fight low, who can counter who wanted to be a boxer and who seems to have boxing skills. Openly talking about taking on not a champion who's retired, but a reigning heavyweight champion who still seems to have a few years left in his prime. Let me also say too, that in the heavyweight division, Right now, we're in an era of big, clunky heavyweights. Guys who are either a little bit slow in terms of hand speed, like Joe Joyce, right? Guys who are a little bit too tethered to the pocket, like Dylan White. Guys who have one big punch, but aren't punchers otherwise. Deontay Wilder or guys who are cautious, right? Want to wait until you slow down before they step on the gas in Anthony Joshua. Now into that mix, you have a Mike Tyson level puncher. That's who Ngamu is. I know some boxing people are horrified here, but understand this guy is a gifted puncher. His opponents and I've looked at several of his fights. His opponents look completely alert. One minute, the next minute, they're on the canvas, and you wonder if they know what hit them. You have a Mike level, a Mike Tyson level puncher. He's 6'4". In other words, this is a big man. He's not as big as Tyson Fury, but he's 6'4". 
But for our purposes here, he fights like a boxer. In other words, I'm going to name some fights here. You want to see him win on a counterpunch. Look at his fight against Arlovsky. If you want to see him throwing punches, some of them don't land or are blocked. But you notice he's throwing these punches with authority. He fully expects to end the fight on them, and then one does. I encourage people to look at his fight against Enrique, where he's throwing uppercuts, folks, with both hands. Both hands. Let me say this, too. You want to see him charged, where he has to back up before dropping a guy. Look at his fight against Cain Velasquez. Let's just say this is that rare fight. And I mean rare fight. Normally I just take the boxer. I'm not even thinking twice about it. Let me also say too that Tyson Fury in my eyes isn't just the current champ. He's historical. By that I mean He's that rare champion who you throw in the conversation when you say, wow, who would win? Right? And you think about champions who were dominant and they were only, let's say, if you're lucky, two in a decade. Tyson Fury's in that conversation. Understand, I don't believe Joshua is. I don't believe Wilder is. Tyson Fury's in that conversation. So Ngamu wants to fight a real champ here. So let me just say this respectfully, because I do think this guy is the best challenge MMA can offer boxing right now. And it's a challenge at the highest level, right? You know what I believe. You know what I've believed for years. There's the heavyweight champion, and then there's everyone else. Right? I've done videos here online where I'm talking about other divisions. I have to mention someone legendary, Manny Pacquiao, to draw the kind of crowds that I draw for just a regular heavyweight title fight. You say heavyweight, people start paying attention. They don't want to hear about the lightweight champion, even though that's a historical division. Right? They want to hear about heavyweights. I hope this fight gets made. I think in some ways, and I'm going to be respectful here, right? I think Anthony Joshua has had a great career, has accomplished a lot in the ring. He's won some very hard fights in spectacular fashion. Right, the Alexander Povetkin fight where Povetkin jumps in and Joshua shortens the punch and catches him on the way in. Right, I give Joshua a lot of credit. But this Ngamu guy is a different type of challenge to Tyson Fury. Right, he's aggressive. There's a difference here. He moves faster than Anthony Joshua, in my opinion. Right? This is a guy who's outside who can close the distance more quickly. Let me say this too. Deontay Wilder, the public here disagrees with me. I think when you're heavyweight champ for five years and you've defended your title primarily by KO, I believe you're a Hall of Famer. Right? Five-year run where you're stopping guys. Right? Stopping guys. But we all know Wilder's one-handed. Right? Wilder doesn't have the level of left hand, dare I say it, that this guy from MMA has. Right? So this guy, to me, hits as hard as gifted puncher. Anthony Joshua hits as hard as Joshua. Has the faster hand speed, from what I could tell on film. 
and is more aggressive. I think against a Tyson Fury, I'd still take Fury in the fight, but I'm guessing the betting odds would be so lopsided that if you're a gambler fooling around with expected value, right? If you're weighing the actual chance a guy has in a fight, right? You look at two fighters, you say, you know what? This guy hits so hard and he's so sudden that he has a one in three chance of winning the fight, right? One in three. So that'd be two to one odds. If you're looking for value and the casino is offering you greater than that, then you understand you're on the value side of the play. I believe the value side of the play, as odd as this is going to sound on a boxing side, I don't talk MMA that often, the value side of the play in a Francis Ngamu Tyson Fury fight, in my opinion, is almost certain to be the Francis Ngamu side of the play. Let me just say this. Understand the proper way to bet the fight. Ngamu wanted to be a boxer. He's an MMA guy. A championship fight would be 12 rounds. If they announce this as a 12 round fight, not as a meet me in the middle, right? It's eight rounds or six rounds. If they announce it as a 12 round fight, and I'm guessing Tyson Fury has to be thinking to himself, I'm an unbeaten professional fighter. I don't want to play around with six rounds where if I get knocked down, I might suffer a loss in this exhibition. I need to protect my brand. If they make it a 12 round fight, that greatly favors the guy who's gone 12 rounds. Tyson Fury. Right? You understand. So, thinking of the fight in terms of distance, the more this fight goes on, the better it is for Tyson Fury. For Ngamu to win, in my opinion, even with this prodigious punching power, he's going to have to stop Fury. Right, so the Ngamu side of the play, you could forget about Ngamu winning a 12-round fight by decision. That's not going to happen. He's also going to have to spend energy getting by Fury's excellent jab. Right, I haven't seen an Ngamu jab like Fury's jab. So Ngamu's going to have to spend energy getting by the jab. He's going to be hit with a lot of power from long distance. Understand, Fury is advanced. Fury can hurt you from distance. Look at the first few rounds of his fight against Deontay Wilder, the rematch. Right, so Fury has advantages. But I do believe, given this guy's hand speed, given this guy's aggressiveness, given his power in both hands, given the fact that he's winning fights on uppercut, he's winning fights with left hands, right? In other words, the guy has concussive power in both hands and the guy moves well. I think part of your betting portfolio in a fight in which I would expect Tyson Fury to have some decided advantages, right? Later rounds, shooting a jab, the ability to dance and have that disrupt the timing of an opponent who hasn't been a professional boxer. I have to say that in this fight, more so than the Conor McGregor fight, you have to include in your betting portfolio the idea of Ngamu by stoppage. Right? This guy's an unforgiving puncher. Right? He's hitting guys. They're down. 
They are hurt. I want people to look at the Enrique fight carefully. You're going to notice he throws a right uppercut. It's blocked. You'll notice he just continues to move forward. This is rhythm. He continues to move forward and in rhythm. He's able to throw a left uppercut. It lands. Fight's over. The other guy is down. He might as well have been hit by an 18-wheeler. A guy with this level of power only has to be right once in the fight. You understand, he doesn't have to methodically outthink and outplan Tyson Fury. He could be getting blown out. He has the hand speed where if there's just a momentary opening, and Fury gave Wilder two such openings the first time they fought, this guy could hit, drop, and hurt him in a way that, quite frankly, only Anthony Joshua, in terms of punching power, with both hands, would be able to. Right? Right? So, put me among those intrigued by this fight. It is a very intriguing matchup. Right? I actually think it's much more than an amusement park exhibit. I think this would be an interesting fight where you would want to see the early rounds. They'll highlight the differences between the two sports. Right? What does Ngamu do when Fury starts hitting him from distance with a jab? What does Fury do if a guy like this slips the jab and he can fight low? If a guy like this slips the jab and runs in, how exactly does Fury handle it? Because, let's face it, Fury can try to grab him. But grabbing an MMA fighter isn't that playing into Ngamu's strengths. Right? Let me just say, too, that you look at a guy like this. I've seen him throw overhand rights in MMA fights. And you start to say to yourself, well, wow. Would Fury know what he's dealing with here? Because the guy does throw an assortment of punches. At the end of the day, I would expect a great boxing champion to defuse an MMA guy in his first pro fight who has not gone 12 rounds, right? I'm guessing, too, that the legs would betray Ngamu, right? He moves extremely well from MMA. Does he move as well when he has a fighter who can go up on his toes and move? Fury at 6'9 is extremely agile, right? It's a bit shocking to know he's 6'9. He's that agile, right? Let's remember, too, Fury himself is ambidextrous, right? Could Fury completely confuse a first-time pro fighter? By going southpaw. Have him in the ring puzzled. I don't think Ngamu's reaction would be the same as Ray Leonard's reaction. The first two rounds of the Marvin Hagler fight where Hagler goes righty. Right? Ray, of course, had been in with righties, <laughs> lefties, right? Uh, Ray could make the adjustment. Here, if Ngamu prepares for Fury as a righty, what does he do? If Fury goes lefty. Right? This is an intriguing fight. I hope it happens. I'm one of those people who looks at the heavyweight division right now. And, you know, quite frankly, I miss that outright aggression that Mike Tyson used to show. Let's remember, too, Tyson much shorter than Ngamu. Tyson could duck under your jab. A lot of the guys Tyson fought were taller than him. Tyson could get low, get inside, be a constant menace. At 6'4", can this guy hide his upper body as well as Mike Tyson as he tries to get inside? 
Does he even get inside? The questions abound. I think it's an interesting fight. Let's hope it happens. Both guys are talking a lot of smack, as you could imagine, using Twitter and stuff like that, right? And Gamu meets with Mike Tyson. He basically is saying, hey, I want Tyson Fury, right? Make it happen. Let's get after it, right? If Ngamu, heavy puncher, wants to fight the heavyweight champ, if I'm the heavyweight champ, this is a huge payday. Simply a big payday. Against a fighter who might be in his first pro boxing match, but if he wanted to be a fighter growing up, it looks to me like Ngamu has been in the gym with gloves on, privately. Right? I think it's a good match. I hope it happens. I don't think you have this level of punching power, hand speed, and outright aggression elsewhere in the heavyweight division. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.